If you would, please stand and join me as, as we read from the Scripture. Today's Scripture reading will be from Psalm 100, a psalm for giving thanks. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. May the Lord bless the reading of these words. I don't know whether I'm, um, I think it was last week we talked about the seven deadly sins, one of which was uh, pride. I think that's self-pride, but I'm very... Uh, proud of the work Jennifer is doing in our youth group, and I appreciate it. Um, uh, a couple of things of note there. Uh, one, some of those kids I didn't recognize, and, and that's because they don't, I, I, as far as I know, come to this church, and we celebrate that because she's reaching out uh, beyond the norm and bringing people uh, in here most likely the unchurched. Uh, and secondly, in uh, administrative council meetings and elsewhere, I've talked about uh, updating our, our familiarity and use of media. And uh, people, they say, well, what? What can you do? And well, my knowledge is uh, limited, so I, I babble out a few things, but now I can say, well, that. You know, that's one of many things that you can do. Uh, what we think we can do is often uh, limited by, by us and not by God. Let's join in the prayer of illumination. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Make us hungry for your heavenly food that it might nourish us this day. We pray this in the name of the bread that you send from heaven, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, we talked first about not the beautiful psalm that uh, Brett read uh, just now, but about the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation is the very last book in the Bible. Uh, one of Jesus' disciples, a man named John, uh, wrote that book. And John had written the fourth gospel, the gospel of John, of course, but a couple of decades later, when he was an old man, uh, John was given this revelation from God. He was writing from the island of Patmos. That's an island out in the Mediterranean. He had been exiled to Patmos uh, by the Romans. Uh, he had the uh, audacity to claim that Jesus Christ was Lord and not uh, the Caesar of Rome. So they sent him away. And one Sunday, the Bible actually says on the Lord's Day, which was on Sunday, uh, John was suddenly summoned by God to come up to heaven, he writes. And he saw a vision of God. Uh, and his vision was of God on a heavenly throne. Uh, and the throne was sparkling uh, like gems. And God was sparkling uh, like gems within it. And there was a rainbow uh, around the throne. And then he also writes of four living creatures that were assembled around God that looked like something like one an ox, one a lion, one a man, one an eagle. And they were in turn surrounded by these 24 white-clawed uh, elders. And all of those assembled around God were continually... Uh, praising him day and night. Holy, 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 you know, Lord God Almighty. They were, they were crying out that only God is worthy to receive glory and honor uh, and power. So together, you know, those assembled around God, in, in a sense, were like an early flash mob, uh, if you will, in that they were there uh, solely to praise God. They had come together 
solely to praise God. If you were here for the video uh, that started our service, uh, that those people that stood up and sang the Hallelujah Chorus in that food court had also gathered solely to praise God. Ro robustly, full-throatedly, uh, wholeheartedly. And uh, the song that they were singing, the Hallelujah Chorus, comes out of the book uh, of Revelation. Uh, you, you heard, and he shall reign forever and ever, time and again. Well, well that is in Revelation eleven fifteen, King of King and Lord of Lords. That's in two places in Revelation, 17, 14, and 19, 16. In, in both of those celebrations of God, both the, the vision in the heavenly court and, and the celebration in, in, the, in the food court were true uh, celebrations. And, and I think that when they were singing it, whether they were in the food court or in the heavenly chorus, that it was uh, souls that were completely in tune uh, with God, completely there uh, with God. You know, and by, by that, I mean they were worshiping him fully with heart and mind and body and soul. And, and I think to worship God is in large part to give him thanks and praise. Shout to the Lord all the earth, the psalm says. And, and that is what I think our worship should be about each Sunday, in large part. Songs of praise to God. With all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our body, all of our soul. And, and that's certainly what's going on in Psalm 100. Because what the psalm is about is Jewish pilgrims who are coming from across the countryside in Israel, but also uh, from any point around the Mediterranean where, where there was a Jew, they would come to make a pilgrimage to the temple. Some would come from Babylon, you know, a thousand miles away. You know, walking, not flying over desert, but walking through desert just to get to the temple of God. And, and, and more specifically, they were going to that temple, if you read the psalm, to give him thanks and praise. You see, they believed the very presence of God was right there in that temple. And that all they could do was praise him. Hallelujah, right? So for 2,000 years, Christians in all times and places have lifted up that psalm uh, in our worship periodically as, as songs of praise to God. Now, many of us are going home this week to be with family, or family is coming to be with us. You know, grandparents going to be with grandchildren, for example. And in a way, those pilgrims in Jerusalem, you see, they were going home on their pilgrimage. They were going on that pilgrimage because they were going to their uh, spiritual home. That was where they belonged. You know, they were going there, as they said, to shout for joy. All the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. You know, to worship God truly. I think to worship God in spirit and truth. Some of you are familiar with that verse from John 4, uh, worship in spirit and, and in truth. I, I think... Ha a lot of your worship has to include thanks and praise. And, and, and certainly we come to God with uh, fear or, or, or sadness or, or worry or, or grief. However we come to him, worship is also a time not just to praise God, but to give yourself fully and openly uh, to God. We go before God Almighty. Because, as the psalm says, God is also our shepherd and the creator and the one whose steadfast love endures forever. But, of course, the truth is many Christians are, are not prone to do that, I mean, really. Uh, they're not prone to come in thanks or praise or uh, 
they're not prone to be there fully with all themselves or they're not there at all uh, and, and some who come no offense to anybody in particular here but they're more like the frozen chosen you know the walking the walking dead uh, one church I preached at regularly when I was in seminary when we were singing they particularly had a, a very distinct in my mind a, a group of men who would sit together in the back row this is a church you know with pews they had one to call the slack jaw effect you know when they when we would start singing and people would pull out a hymn they would be singing they would, they would have their hands kind of like birds on a wire on the back of that pew hello no uh, but in all the churches I've been privileged to serve uh, typically the prayers of, of intercession and petition are far more numerous than prayers of praise or thanks but this is a week of, of thanks and praise what praise might you give to God today What thanks? What praise Thursday or, or thanks on Thursday? You know, this is a, a wonderful week of, of thanks, of family, of memory, of traditions, but also of, of hope and, and, and faith. You know, for example, John Fink and others are, are, are leading the Thanksgiving feast, you know, serving the community, especially those in need, on Thursday morning. And one of the things I pray for us today is that during the prayers of people following the sermon, if it ever ends, each of us might be able to lift up out loud or, or silently prayers or words of thanks and praise. All of us should have them. My word, it just rained yesterday, right? In the words of the psalmist, shout for, the, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs, for his steadfast love endures forever. And I also pray this day that we can look at ourselves and our relationship with God and the way in which we worship. And the question is, well, that one's gone. Do we praise God? Do we make a joyful noise when we come to worship? Or, or is it, uh, do we come with sighs of boredom? Or mutterings of complaint? Do we worship God with gladness or with obligation? Uh, do we come into his presence with, with singing? Or are we largely uh, silent? And Psalm 100 says why we can come with praise. It's... Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us. We are his. We're the sheep of his pasture. See, the verse tells us that our identity is found in God. And by identity, I also include things that we think and say and do each day like Bonnie's identity I appreciate her standing up and doing the mission work as Bill and Nan have been doing it's one thing I've always known about Bonnie from the earliest days I met her her identity begins and ends with God and I appreciate it so much because God is the one who made us and cares for us and that alone is reason for joyful worship you know, to worship God with gladness is to praise Him, not only in church, but wherever we find ourselves. You know, years ago there was a seminary theologian that believed in God more as an idea or concept than a living reality. And, and one night she and her husband were watching the Milagro uh, Beanfield War. Did anybody ever see the Milagro Beanfield War? I, it must have been you and me, Charlie. It didn't do very well at the 
at the box office. But there was a scene in that movie where there was a worker in the bean field, and he was wearing a T-shirt with a picture of, of, of God on it. And her husband said, you know, something like, well, that's blasphemous, that's horrible, how can you do that? And she had a God moment. Because she had always thought God was this remote figure in the sky who has nothing uh, to do with us, kind of wound, wound up the universe like an alarm clock and it unfolds. But she saw in that moment that God is near. God's close to us. God's in the nitty-gritty of life. Uh, God is, is in the cancer wards and the school rooms and the worship services and the, and the fields and our, and our homes. You know, we belong to God. Hallelujah. You know, know that the Lord is God. It is He that made us. We are the sheep of His pasture. May we embrace that. Wherever we are in all that we do. May we be like that heavenly chorus and the people in the food court and give ourselves as fully and as surely, as wholeheartedly, as full-throatedly to God as they do. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you have made all that is and that you are nearer to us than our heartbeats and our breaths. We give thanks and sing your praise, for only you are truly worthy of thanks and praise. We thank you for all the blessings, and above all, for the gift of Jesus Christ, who walks this walk with us, and has prepared rooms for each of us in the mansion of heaven. Amen.